we were just in this peaceful, calm, serene, perfect day, perfect water, perfect environment, and then just bang. People were frozen to the spot. The last thing that I remember was when I looked at my parents. They said, what should we do? What should we do? The water is coming. And then I said, I, I don't know. Craig ran from the beach. Run, 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 run. How do waves break on the horizon? And there was a guy standing next to me. And I said to him, do you think we should maybe go up on the hill? And he said, oh, no, we've got plenty of time. Waves up to 10 metres high engulfed the coasts of many countries. Of waves. And suddenly it was complete chaos, people running and screaming. The death toll is now rising as the terrible picture of damage emerges. There's this real kind of sense of, she's in there, she's in there. My focus, I just want to see Craig, I want to find him. I started to try to contact them and I didn't get any answer. It was like a war zone. There was nowhere to hide. Dead bodies have been piled up on the streets in Phuket, covered in plastic sheeting, waiting for someone to identify them. We had absolutely no idea what we were walking into. We'd been told on leaving Australia, 300 people deceased on a beach. Those bodies are decomposing now. The first thing you do is you buy yourself time. You've got to refrigerate the bodies. They're all black and they're all swollen. You realise that you can't tell the difference between them. After people started realizing that everybody in the pictures was dead, they became in their own way, not appeals for information, but memorials about what had happened. I don't know what happened to them. Were they swept out to sea? Where are they resting? I hadn't said goodbye to her. Foreign groups would arrive, would only seek to identify their own, and as soon as they had identified their own, they would pack up and they would leave. They would not care if there were thousands of ties left unidentified. The mantra was we will get them home. We will we'll get everybody home. We're not just going to take some home. How would it feel if you lost a loved one and didn't know where they were? How they died? Were they actually dead? It's like a massive jigsaw puzzle. Ideally, you're looking for something that has the person's DNA on it. Maybe looking at finding out what was the child's favourite toy, even finger paintings. We owe it to them to make sure that we return them and allow them through that grieving process. Their bodies was found. And it took a very, very long time. For me, it was like... A I'm their mother, I have to face them no matter what's left of them. So he rang on Christmas Day and he said, by the way, you're going to become a grandfather. I thought later I probably should have sounded more excited than I did, but I'll make that up for him the next time I speak with him. Of course, I never got a chance. So. If I hadn't got that, I would still be looking for, for the rest of my life. Tell people you love them. Delight in their great joys as well. Even today, nearly 10 years later, I would imagine they still think, could it be? The first when we're born, we're given a name. We carry that our entire lives. And when that is stripped from us, it is so fundamentally dehumanising that all cultures seem to agree we need to bring that identity back. <laughs>